Warning, the following video contains strong language which may be offensive to some viewers and or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Welcome to Meet the Author, where you can join in on insightful conversations with best-selling and award-winning indie published authors. Your hosts today are Rob and Joan, who themselves are indie published authors, book publicists, and paranormal investigators with Tampa Bay Spirits, based in Tampa Bay, Florida. Thanks for dropping by. And now, on with the show. Good evening. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I'm Joan. And I'm Rob. And we're glad to see you here. I hope you enjoy the show. As the intro said, we're indie published authors. We have three books, Bioprints, Flash Zombies, and Clone Drones, the O'Rourke series. And we also have been paranormal investigators for a number of years. We now belong to a team called Tampa Bay Spirits. <clears throat> Tonight we have a really special guest, the writer of The Hollow Man. He is the world's best story contest winner of 2014. His name is Paul Hollis. He's an Amazon number one bestseller, an awesome Indies Award winner of excellence. And I think you're really going to enjoy everything he has to say. Before he comes on, let us show you one of the videos of his first book, The Hollow Man. <laughs> That was great. All right, let's bring Paul on. Come on in, Paul. Hi, Hello. Hi everyone. Hi, Joan Hi. and Rob. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. We're so glad to see you here. <laughs> oh my, my goodness. My we need to Always exciting. Always exciting. We've got to be a here. bunch of people here to, to <laughs> see you. My goodness, we've got Sue Pearson, Barbara Duffy, Hennison. Uh, Ted. Hi, Ted. Ted's Hi, Ted. our boss. Let's be really nice to Ted. Trish Pipkins. <laughs> Trisha Santosario. <laughs> oh, Trish Santosario. Yay. Dom's Thanks. Mom. Yeah, Dom's mom. <laughs> Sorry, Trish. That's your claim to fame. Wayne. Wayne, welcome Wayne back. Skinner, well, welcome back. Wayne says, you want to put the, that comment up? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> cool video, Paul. Can you see the comments, Paul? Um, I cannot see them on the right here, but I do see the one on, in the under you, underneath you guys here. Oh, okay, we'll just we'll throw them up. And I think our niece Jennifer is here because, oh, and Jillian Thrillion is back. <laughs> Hi, Jillian. <laughs> okay, Paul. Yeah. All right. I'll stop looking at all of that and I'll pay attention to you. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you again. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Yeah, always good. Doesn't help to complain anyway. You want to tell us a little bit about your books? 
Yeah. Um, so the, the Halloween series actually uh, is based on a, uh, some current events, let's say, uh, some true current events in the early to mid 1970s. Um, and the, the books actually chronicle some of my lesser known adventures during that era. Um, to make a long story short, um, I was actually approached with, by a guy while I was digging ditches for the um, uh, Peace Corps in, in uh, Eastern Africa, a place called Tanzania, uh, during the monsoon seasons. Um, so, yeah, he, he said, look, uh, I think you might be wasting your time here. I, I've got something better. I've got a better offer for you. So what that offer was, was, uh, was actually to tour Europe on somebody else's money uh, and, and um, just kind of hang around. And, and then they would ask me from time to time to, they would hear something and they asked me to uh, find out more information about a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy who knew somebody's cousin who thought they heard something about terrorism <laughs> and sort of thing. And, and they would want me to um, research the, the people, the, the plans, etc. And and that was back at a time when there were uh, no cell phones, no computers to say, you know, no personal computers anyway. Um, and so, we, so I had to, to, to go to a lot of libraries, a lot of churches, but, but you know, I, I, I kind of looked at that thing called microfiche. You know, some of your older viewers might know what that is, but, <laughs> but uh, some of the kids may not. Um, it was uh, just a, a kind of like a, a blueprint, kind of a, a black and white, kind of a negative sort of thing that, that was able to photograph uh, uh, newspapers and periodicals and, and books and whatever else was on there. That was our, our internet of the 1970s. So, uh, so when so that was what was supposed to happen. I was supposed to get this information and and then turn it over to the professionals who would um, resolve the situation, let's say, and. and um, try to prevent uh, any of this terrorism from coming to our, sh our shores here in, in the United States. Um, so, but that's what was supposed to happen, but being young and impulsive and stupid and arrogant and frivolous at the same time, it didn't quite work out that way. So I got into lots of trouble here. Um, let me tell you a little bit about what was going on at the time. The, the um, terrorism was just starting to, to come back in full force after after um, years of kind of being uh, all about to sort of um, well let me set the stage for you in the in the old days let's call it the old days of the sixties and before when when uh, terrorism came about it was about one person one 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 idea one thing that and the the and what they would do is they would shoot or kill or somehow uh, blow up, uh, as, as it turns out, that, that got more, much more popular than the shooting people at the time. Uh, they would blow up at one particular politician, let's say, but, but they quickly learned that politicians were kind of a dime a dozen, you know, and it's like you, you, you kill one and, and, and they're going to replace them with two more. <laughs> as, as, as idiotic. So, so what they, um, what they, fell back upon was something that, that really hit the hearts and, and souls and minds of, of, of normal people. And that was un, un, uncontrolled explosions, let's say, and, and, and it went after our children, basically, the, the innocent people, women and children and men who had no idea about politics or ideology or anything like that. But that got our attention really quick, um, and, and especially uh, in the uh, surveillance um, uh, areas in uh, U.S. Foreign Services, uh, it got their attention real fast, and, and they wanted to know more about it so that they could stop it from coming here, basically. So I was kind of like the, uh, uh, the guy in a red shirt, if you're, if you're a Star Trek fan. I'm, I was <laughs> um, you aren't anymore, are you? <laughs> but they didn't tell me that script. It wasn't written into my script at all, but but that was basically what I was. It's like, you know, if I, if I got uh, caught after killed, all deniable, uh, et cetera. But the upside was I could go to any American Express office in Europe and give them a, a special number and they would give me money. <laughs> and, 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 and I could see Europe and do anything I wanted to. Uh, now, folks, don't try that nowadays because 
you won't be able to. American Express will look at you like you're crazy if you give them a number. So uh, um, that only worked for that particular time. And and as far as I know, maybe it was only for me. I, I had no idea. But but I, I was able to travel around and, and, and occasionally they would call on me uh, and, and say, we need more information about this and this and this situation. So so that was kind of the uh, how that kind of was working in that way. So so and that's what the books are about. Um, the first one is about uh, uh, a, a terrorist who was plotting really uh, was trying to figure out ways to to let's say destroy eight aircraft at one time, ten ten aircraft if he could, um, from uh, exploding really at, at one time. You know, so he would so instead of just taking down one planet in the, in, this, in this time, he would take down. He wanted to take down eight or ten of them, to kind of things. So. So that was what I was kind of after. I didn't really actually know that, and no one knew that at, at, at that time, but I was kind of trying to follow him through Europe, and, 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 I, and I went all through uh, Spain. I, I first encountered him actually in Paris and, uh, and followed him to, to Spain, to Madrid, and, and, uh, uh, and then that's where you see that explosion in the, in the um, video there. And, uh, and so that started really a chase across across Europe, across, back across Spain and, and uh, into uh, uh, France, and and, and uh, eventually up to Paris to 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 at the end of the story. But the, the did you have anyone with you at that time? Um, I I did not uh, until um, uh, probably three two months into the book. Um, I, I actually had met and and worked with a. Uh, a lady, uh, uh, MI6 agent who was, uh, you know, that's uh, uh, English, British uh, Foreign Service, if you don't know. Um, and uh, she was actually a year, uh, a bit younger than me, but uh, much more mature and uh, and level headed. So so in the end, she was she literally saved my life probably 10 or 12 times. And, you know, and uh, there's a, there's one sequence in the book you'll get to where I, where I I'm in a knife fight, and I hold, and I, and I actually got my hand really badly cut. And I, I don't I actually, I don't know if you can see that, that scar there, but there's a, there's a scar right here, that uh, that's from a knife fight that was uh, in the middle of the book somewhere in there. And uh, uh, and and Zeta, the the, uh, the the female lead in, in the book, is is uh, uh, saves me, saves my life eventually there as well. But but um, yeah, she was with me then ever after that that sequence there. So so about a quarter into the book, she shows up and and uh, starts saving my life and uh, and that sort of thing. So, but um, yeah, so <laughs> got that. So uh, let's see. So you might want to figure out how uh, how I got to uh, uh, Tanzania in in East Africa when I was in my early twenties. Uh, I. Um, uh, let me let me go back to when I started college. Uh, I actually started college in uh, in 1967, the end of the end of 67. I think they might like to hear what you did when you were five years old with yeah. your dad. Yeah, do a little bit on that. Uh, ah, okay. Um, yeah. Well, um, yeah, I I, um, I had some very good teachers in my life. <laughs> some of it stuck. Not of not all of it stuck, but but my um, my father was. Um, was an entrepreneur, let's say, in the in the in Alabama in the in in uh, the fifties, <laughs> let's say in the fifties, and uh, he sort of made this liquid that was uh, it looked like water, but uh, burned a little bit as you were drinking it. Um, he, yeah, he 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 uh, uh, cooked up moonshine, uh, uh, a lot of corn and, and potato mash and, and that sort of thing, but. Uh, Some of the people that are listening right now are very excited about this part. Ah, uh, okay. So, oh, so maybe you could send them the maybe, recipe. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I was about. Uh, I actually probably still remember how to do that. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I came in because I was so small at five years old that that I could get underneath a car. So what my dad concocted was he he filled the gas tank with with the uh, the moonshine, white lightning stuff, and um, and he would. We would drive the car, so there was no, no nothing in the car to when he was going out selling it. And so, 
what I had to do was get underneath the, the, the car and under the gas tank, actually, and, and turn this little, uh, they had like a little twisty thing there, and it would fill up the, fill up the, the uh, mason jar quartz. We had a whole trunk full of those things and uh, fill up the mason jar and I'd turn it off, you know, and I'd, I'd hold it out for him and he'd put the cap on it and, and sell it for, for 10 bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever it was at the time. And so, yeah, it was a, it was, it was quite an interesting time, but, you know, whenever we were stopped by the revenuers and, uh, and those kind of guys, they would, they actually never found anything, but what, uh, what it did was actually that, since we were burning it in the car, it was it was like 110 octane fuel, and so it it destroyed the engine. About every three weeks, we had to pull the head off and and reseat the valve. So I, I got pretty good at some, some uh, mechanics as <laughs> you know, mechanical things with cars as well at, at that time, and which helped me later, by the way, to steal a few cars in Europe. <laughs> so that was that, that was another interesting. Yeah, for that. yeah. So so I so I learned from all kinds of teachers. So. That's what I'm saying. And also, yeah. don't you like to say that 80% of these books are 90% true? Yeah, that's my favorite saying. Uh, there, there are a couple of scenes where I sort of made up because I'm not in in those scenes. Uh, but I should say the main character is not in the scenes. Uh, <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I mean, there, there are a couple of scenes, especially with the bad guy, you know, I had to make up some of his stuff there, but, but most of the rest of it is as true as I could remember it, uh, uh, as far as conversations went and, and, uh, locations and, and, um, what was going on with cultures and classics and, and everything that was going on around me at the time. Yeah. So it was, they're pretty well true. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've just had one lucky, lucky, lucky life, you know, so, um, yeah. and that was, that was the first of many, so so I'm up to like six as a cat goes, but but uh, <laughs> I, I figured I've got a couple more lives to go. But but um, back then, so so back to to college then. Uh, yes. so, I, so I get yes. so I get into college, and and instantly I I fell into this subculture that that basically um, really redefined my reshaped my reality, uh, probably literally. A little bit more than I wanted, but certainly figuratively. Um, it was uh, the next summer. I, I, I actually participated in the um, the 1968 Democratic Convention riots in Chicago. Um, you didn't start claims, them, did you? One of my claims to fame. Um, you didn't start and, them, right? uh, pardon me. You didn't start them, did you? <laughs> uh, no comment there. Oh. <laughs> I may have I may have been with some of the people who did start it though, oh, uh, okay. Ren, uh, Rennie Davis and Hoffman and and uh, Ruben and uh, they were Hoffman? they were my buds. Yeah. Oh my god! My bud. Yeah. So, but anyway, so I had so we went we went through that and I know what we're talking about, but geez. Yeah. So. Um, so, anyways, um, oh, I see a song. I, I see someone asking a question. Of the, have I heard of the song "Hollow Man"? Right. I actually, uh, a group in England actually wrote that for me specifically. So it's in it's in another one of my videos. You y'all should really hear that. It's it's much better than anything I could ever imagine. Uh, it it actually is called "The Hollow Man," and it fits perfectly with the book. So uh, so there's a there's another video. It's a six minute video that that covers that uh, um, that thing there. So. So in, in 1968, <clears throat> during the summer, after the after the uh, convention was over, I, I I went to California for a couple months and hung out in the hate with uh, in, uh, hate Ashbury. If you any hippies out there, um, with so, uh, I hung out with people like uh, Santana and and uh, Garcia and Grace Slick and people like that. They were they were uh, uh, just normal kids, you know, like living in living in cockroaches you know, places, cockroaches as big as your hand, you know, sort of thing. And, but anyways, um, that was there. Then, then of course, you know, in the fall and, and winter of there, it was, uh, it was the uh, Chicago seven trial, which they were, where Rennie Davis and Hoffman, Abby, uh, Abby and, uh, uh, and Jerry were put on trial, et cetera. Um, and then Woodstock came along. And so of course I had to go, you know, and there's an, there's a, there's, a, there's a, I had to, yeah. I mean, it was my calling, right? Um, so, uh, so, so, you know, I can tell you that there's a, there's no saying that that uh, that goes like, um, if you remember the '60s, you weren't there, and yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and and uh, I can tell you that uh, I don't remember a lot, but but what I do remember is uh, I remember what 19 years old was like. I remember being uh, hungry and buzzed and pumped on adrenaline all at the same time, dancing to the nonstop music, etc. Uh, what I don't remember is another time like that. That was the that was a uh, that was like watch that was like seeing Mickey Mantle hit a home run, you know, sort of thing. Um, that was the, the best time that kids could ever have that 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 you would could imagine. And peaceful. I mean, I there was a couple of fist fights I saw, but but not really anything. A couple of drug overdoses. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But uh, um, but it was a it was a fun time. It was a. I mean, it was a. So, so many, so many things to remember there. So, so having gone to school to my major was stay out of Vietnam, by the way. Um, <laughs> after, after, Everyone after, majored in that at that time. So, so after that, you know, I, I graduate and my dad, he, he says, hey, uh, nice job. You want to join the FBI, right? I mean, I, and I said, mm, it sounded good, but, 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 but. I was like, okay, I, I, I was, I, I would have been a hypocrite by trying to stay away from holding a gun for four years in college, and now all of a sudden he throws, he sends me over to Quantico, right? So, so I said, no, okay, I'm not going to do that right now, and uh, so I joined the Peace Corps, and uh, they sent me down to this place, uh, at Paintsville, Kentucky, somewhere down there, you know, for training. And um, it, it's just off the Cumberland Plateau, if you're familiar with the area, and and just and a stone's throw probably from uh, uh, West Virginia, right? the, the lost world of West Virginia. And um, and so about a week into that training, I figured out, man, these guys aren't kidding. So along came this uh, opportunity to uh, go to Africa and uh, help out there right away. And and I thought, well, you know, lions and tigers might be a little more preferable to uh, um, to, to the dinosaurs in lost in the in, in West Virginia, you know, sort of thing. So, because uh, I, I had never been to West Virginia at the time, so I, I didn't know what it was like. I thought I thought they still had dinosaurs. So, awesome. so I get to so I get there, and it, and it's a uh, monsoon season. They give me this flat nosed shovel and said, "Start digging here." And I, and within uh, two days, I was up to my knees in in uh, mud and some kind of animal excrement. And uh, uh, and I didn't know if it was raining hard or if I was just crying. So and <laughs> and a couple of, couple of weeks later, the, this this guy showed up, you know, and he says, "Hey, I got something better for you. You want to do that?" And I thought, "Hell yes!" <laughs> 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 so, is it dry? Is it dry? And, and is it, is it uh, you know, and something there? And he always said, "Oh yeah, it's, it's way better. Think about this." And and so they they gave me a, about a month's training with uh because they were in a hurry they gave me about a month's training with a uh with a marine for uh, actually the guy taught the early seals they were they were known as uh, uh udt at the time i think way back then but uh they the marines the marine corps actually taught the navy how to be seals basically um so anyway they gave me one of those guys and 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 oh i was wishing i was back digging ditches uh a lot quicker than than you could imagine um but so, because uh he uh, was relentless and uh but he taught me some things to save my life a few times and then they they sent me to uh, to live with uh with an italian survival team uh from their their uh, special forces in italy to in the mountains of in italy to uh to do survival training. Um, not sure how they thought that was going to help me in Europe because I had a whole different plan for Europe. And, uh, and, and but yeah, I, I learned how to eat uh, grasshoppers and learned how to strip bark off of certain trees and eat, eat that. And, and also tarantulas, you know, they, they, by the way, they do taste like hairy chicken. So, so uh, <laughs> if, if anybody's, if anybody's interested in that, but, but catching them and killing them was not my favorite uh, uh, bit of uh, uh, advice no. to anybody there. So, cause they can jump 15 feet, by the way, if you're, if you're afraid of spiders, do not go around them. So, um, so anyways, then I got to Europe and, and there was a story the hollow man. And, and the second book is, uh, is is called uh, uh, London Bridge is falling down, and that happens, of course, in the in the UK and Ireland. Um, the whole thing of, about it there, and that was all about the bombings uh, 
uh, of um, of the IRA and um, uh, and and the uh, uh, premises there. You know, they, they had uh, the the uh, NSA had had heard some stories about there being a list, a hit a hit list, basically of uh, of of um, people, places, things that the IRA and other folks were going after. And so my my job there was to really find out if that list was real and, and if it wasn't, et cetera, you know, sort of thing. And and it actually turned into something way, 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 way bigger than that. Uh, and so uh, that, and that's what the st that story is about. And the third one, which is coming out hopefully in the early spring, is going to be called Surviving Prague. And knowing me, you'll, you'll appreciate that title. Um, I uh, was trying my best to survive all of this stuff. But uh, that that one has um, me um, actually. I at the beginning, I uh, actually at the real beginning, Zeta, the the MI6 agent, is, is she's actually accused of murder behind the Iron Curtain in che in in uh, Czechoslovakia, Prague, in, in the early seventies, and and so. I broke into the country. Um, most people want to break out of the Iron Curtain countries, but here I am. I'm breaking into the Iron Curtain country to save her. Uh, but she neither it turned out. She neither wanted nor needed my help. And uh, so, but that's what that book is all about. And and uh, and actually stopping a, a major plot there as well. So uh, there you go for the unsung hero for for all of that. So. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to need to take a break here. For a little a commercial break. Commercial break, a word from our sponsors or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> when we come back, we're going to give away some books, right, Paul? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, either yeah. either one that you'd like. Okay. And you're going to put your signature in them probably. I will, yeah. So okay, your real signature or your you know, <laughs> agent signature or? Well, I, I got to tell you, I've had, I've had like four or five uh, passports. Taylor. Uh, I, I, I mostly use the West German passport in Europe, uh, but I did have a did have a Spanish one for a while, and a and a UK as well, and and, and the American one. But I didn't use the American one too well because um, uh, it was it was um, it, it just never fit right into the place, you know, kind of stuff. Being Americans, being ugly Americans, etc. At the time yeah. over there, and yeah. and, um, and yeah. you know, and you know us, we're cocky, arrogant. No. Guys, anyway. No. So. <laughs> so. Okay, well, hold so. that thought and we'll, we'll get right, right back, back with you. Sit back for Go a minute. And, uh, but don't go away, Paul. Oh, yeah. This is fascinating. Everybody, hold on to your seats. <laughs> Paratalk Radio is a member of radio.com. Download the app, search Paratalk Radio. One word. That's it. Pretty easy peasy. Radio.com. WLFE-DB Radio is on Spotify with all its great shows like Across the Pond, Inside the Drag Closet, Step into the Paranormal, Just Cindy, Where's My Sage, Unfiltered Talks with Bryce, Metal Mayhem ROC, Paratalk Radio, Real Talk with Dom, and more. So download the Spotify app today to stay connected to all your WLFE-DB Radio shows. You've been listening to WLFE-DB.com, where our shows are your shows. Hey, guys and dolls, this is Casey DeVille, the better half of DeVille, Inc., Baltimore, Maryland. If you're ever in Baltimore, stop in and see me and Tony. Invisible Brie, 5920 Eastern Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21224. Give us a call if you're in the area, 410 Four zero zero nine six four one, or look us up on the web at thebilling.com. Debilling, where we specialize in you. You're listening to WLFE DB Radio. Now back to our program. All right. Hello, we're <laughs> back. Well, as <laughs> promised, here we go. The first five people that email Paul at the Hollow Man and tell you, tell him which book you want and what country you're in, 
will win a signed copy of that book. Yay! So, I think that'll be fun. Jump on in there. and yeah, good. If we don't have a winner by the end, Paul will be back in touch with you. So. Okay, yep, absolutely. So I know that you've lived in a lot of countries, and didn't you say you've been like in 50 different countries? <clears throat> yeah, a little bit north of 50, but yeah, right right around there. Um, I Yeah, it, I've lived in, uh, I've lived overseas a total probably of 11, maybe 12 years. Um, and I, I've been in, <clears throat> lived in London and Paris and Brussels, outside of Brussels, actually, it was in a place called Waterloo, which if you're a Napoleon fan, you might know where that is. Um, Sao Paulo, Brazil, um, uh, Rome, Madrid, uh, Tokyo, um, Anchorage, Alaska. I mean, I, if you're if you're thinking of a uh, if you're thinking of a of your favorite vacation, the best place you could ever be, I've probably been there. Um, okay. Southern Southern I France. Know. I know that's what you always say, so uh, I'm going to quiz you because I have four places I'd really like to go. Let's see if you've been there. Number one spot, Machu Picchu. I have not been there, but I've been to Peru and I've been I've been uh, to Ecuador and uh, uh, and Chile and, of course, Brazil, et cetera. Yeah, I, I was instructed to stay away from uh, Colombia, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was Persona <laughs> non, non gratis there, yeah. Um, Belize, I've been to. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, I've been there. So my next one is Israel. Um, I have only passed through the airport there, so I don't count. I don't count that as a as a uh, uh, a country for me. So, but well, you should. You were there. Well, I didn't. I actually my through the didn't airport. Yeah, <laughs> okay, uh, airport. Airport's, airport's not the. Uh, that's, that's like the movie so is so it's like, wait, where we're we going back to the airport? I've been there. <laughs> I want to see the city, right? So, yeah, right. I didn't, I didn't see much of it there. So. Egypt, Egypt, absolutely, yeah. Been to uh, to uh, Cairo, of course, Alexandria, um, yeah. Uh, that that one didn't make it into the books, yeah. But I've been there. Been to New Zealand, yeah, absolutely. Beautiful, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Breathtaking. That's one of my favorite places on earth. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to emigrate there, but we didn't. We stayed here, decided to be Americans. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, so I'm on a losing streak though. So what's your next one? <laughs> um, oh, I only had one more. Yeah. Per, well, no, per not, no, no, no to Antarctica. Too cold. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a warm blooded guy. <laughs> <laughs> those, you know, um, actually, those were my top three, and then there was just one more, and just you'll know why when I say it, Bali. Oh uh, yeah, I I actually passed through Bali as well, but I don't count that as just the uh, airport. It was, it was, yeah, no, nah, it was a couple of weeks on R and R, but it was not oh. really. Uh, oh, that not, still counts. <laughs> that still counts. Okay. Are you kidding? <laughs> that really counts. <laughs> the, 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 Mal, the, the Maldives have not been there either. Yeah. So you picking all the places. I, I thought you'd pick be pick out uh, southern France or the <laughs> or or Rio or, or some place like that. <laughs> well, you know the thing is that I I bet you have been to Lithuania. Um, I have been through Lithuania, but it was in the it was in the um, Cold War days, so it wasn't really a much of a tourist. Uh, uh, destination, as we say, so. Right. <clears throat> oh Australia, my yep. Yeah, Australia. <laughs> How do you like it there? I I liked Australia, not as much as New Zealand, but uh, but uh, right. you know the people the people are always friendly. I mean, I, everywhere I go, people are friendly to me because I I just start talking and they they either run or they stand and listen <laughs> to me. So. So they, 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 I, you know, that that's that's just me. They they, uh, but all the, all the people there were, were nice, and uh, you know, I always I always go back on my history kind of thing and think, thinking that everyone who lives in Australia must be <clears throat> descendant from a criminal because that's where the English sent all their their criminals, right? So, um, but not true, or or maybe 
maybe it is, and they just didn't tell me about that. So, but uh, uh, yeah, I've been through the Amazon uh, actually uh, as well. I've been to, lived in uh, Sao Paulo and Rio, uh, uh, and uh, went to uh, Brasilia a few times, at the capital city there. So yeah, yeah. and and uh, been actually on a little boat in the uh, uh, in the, the um, Amazon. But as soon as they said Piranha, I said that's it. Boat tour, <laughs> boat tour ended. Done. That wasn't a code word. That was a yeah, real. That was, okay. that was that was not a that was a. See, there, there are some things that a that a that a scared little kid will be afraid of, <laughs> and admit it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't ever want to go swimming with piranhas. Thank you very much. It's bad enough living in Florida. Well, that's for sure. So, <laughs> oh, Paul, when did, when does your new book come out? The uh, the original Hollow Man. No, the no. Uh, when did your new one? The the. Oh, uh, I I've got it scheduled for early summer if I can get if I can early get it summer. finished. Oh, summer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're looking forward to that. Uh, good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. This is what Nancy has to say. Oh, thank you, Nancy. I I I um have always tried to to go new places uh, and you know, be be places where you wouldn't actually know because I actually um, thrive on uh, understanding people and their cultures and their political views and, and all of those kinds of things that make them tick. And it turns out that they're really not all that much different than than anybody, really. I mean, they, we, they, they, I mean everybody has, has got that, but, but um, um, actually, you know, getting into into back into the books, though, um, uh, the locations that that have uh, that, that are settings within your book are to me are one of the two most important things to to uh, think about because you because every every character then within your book is is then bound by by location, the setting, the these people around them, uh, the the streets, the, the street signs, whether it's a whether it's a, a language you can speak, whether you can't speak it, um, a, a conversation between uh, two guys in let's say an Italian restaurant on, in uh, in Jersey would be much different than than two guys talking in an alley and behind the Iron Curtain in the 1960s and 70s, right? So so you, so. Location is really important to to uh, to have. Uh, uh, it's one of the two things. The other one is characters, of course. But um, because you can, because um, to me, you could uh, a story doesn't carry a book, but good characters will. To me, sort of thing. So, um, and and that's another thing. And and real characters are what I really thrive on. I try to get the, the characters to come off the page uh, and, and be with the reader. Um, and, uh, you know, one way I do that is, is with, uh, I include, uh, it's not, all my conversations are not grammatically correct. They are uh, certain, some of it, some of it's in, in other languages that I try to explain as, as we go. Uh, some of it is, um, uh, I use um, uh, slang, I use characterizations, I use, uh, um, uh, 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 the uh, voice, vo the voices like that that the person uh, would actually be using in in Spain, or it, it, so it's, it includes the accents, it includes contractions or not contractions, and and so it turns out that that every character then becomes a real person then if you can do that you know, kind of thing. So um, so, anyways, I sorry to get off on a tangent there. <laughs> no, but that's true. You yeah, you, you write so that the person speaking talks like people talk, which we yeah. don't all speak grammatically correct <clears throat> for darn sure. Yeah, absolutely. Not even yeah, and I'm I'm the least I'm the, the most uh, prolific at that one. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's really important. And like I said about Cindy last week, you write the same way. You're when you read Paul's books, you're there with the character, <clears throat> experiencing what the character is experiencing, seeing it, smelling it, you know, tasting the food. That's right. that's the great part about it. Plus, it takes you away, doesn't it? When you write about all the places that you've been to, it takes the reader away to those places. It it, it does. I mean, unless you were like born in in Madrid or something like that, you you might see some see the books a bit different. I, I don't know, but I, I see them as I saw them as a young 
impressionable kid um, who was, you know, trying to sightsee while they're trying to make me uh, follow terrorists, you know, sort of thing. So, um, <laughs> so we two different agendas there, man. So, um, so yeah, but anyways, yeah, the, the characters, I really listen to people a lot. I, I listen, I, I, I watch how they, if they speak using their hands and, uh, or, you know, any kind of way like that. And, and, and the, 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 the actual words that they use sometimes are, are, are key to understanding their personalities and stuff like that. So, well, uh, speaking of um, people and listening to people, um, we got about 20 minutes left or so, 15, 20 minutes. And anybody have any questions out there that they want to direct? We'll take the time to answer them as many as we can. And so go ahead and finish your thought there, Paul. Uh, that was it. Um, I'm, I was, that was it. All right. <clears throat> So you see what Nancy Lee has to say. I love hearing about locations. Absolutely, it's the base. Traditions and cultures come from that. It's a different world for some people. I can't wait to read some of your books. <clears throat> well, thank you. Yeah, I, I've. Um, I that to me is is um, what I what I try to do for my books is is write a movie, but but in prose, in in just a in in a novel kind of a form. And so I want you to actually see as a reader, see and feel and touch. And as you said, Joan, you know, be, be there with, with the, you know, holding hands or, or, or experiencing when I was talking to um, dead people, for example, I don't give too much away there, but, but uh, in the first book, uh, there is, um, uh, I'm pretty well convinced right now they were dreams, but at the time I, they, they uh, it was uh, certainly a real little girl. So, um, you know, I mean, you, you, I mean, you just have to 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 uh, go with the with people, and and uh, people will drive your story. They change your story, actually. So, well, people that know me will tell you I talk to dead people. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, there you yeah. See, there you go. See. So, so you may have been. Trish Pipkins has a question. What place in the world do you think is the most dangerous right now? That's a good question. Yeah, I I um. Thanks to a few of our um, predecessors, I think probably to me, uh, North Korea uh, is um, is a is probably uh, not the most fearful right now, but they're they're learning and they're learning fast. Uh, I would say that the Middle East, because we keep poking it, um, uh, and we don't really know enough to leave it alone, because we're trying to change five thousand years of history into our own ways, you know, kind of th stuff. And, and, uh, and, and really the reason that we fight any war is, is for resources. Basically, you can go all the way back to, to our American revolution. And every one of them has been on resources from this is our, our land now, right. Uh, is in the, in the um, uh, revolutionary war all the way up to, well, there, there's probably some oil in, uh, in, in South uh, Vietnam, uh, you know, the, the definitely oil and, and other uh, and lots of poppies, you know, in, in uh, Afghanistan so to protect and, you know, the, all those things that, that really kind of um, make the, make this a scary world kind of thing. Uh, China is, uh, uh, well, let me, let me back up a second. My, my feeling is that World War Four will be fought over uh, technology. Right. And it's and it's all about how tenuous, uh, you know, all these hacks and stuff you're you're seeing about now in, in uh, the banks and all that sort of thing. Well, just wait till they sort of move to uh, the uh, electrical grid and start taking that down. Right. And and taking down all the power structures uh, uh, by hacking it. Right. So. So and these and all these guys are learning out there. They're learning how to do this. And and um, uh, so so that really is um, probably our my biggest concern is really over the technology and the lack of of, of security recognition that, that security is is really needed for those kinds of things but but as far as a country goes I, and i'm not really sure that that iran is a is a real threat because uh, you know the rest of the most of the rest of the, the world is against them and china is going to be a, certainly is, is uh, coming up to be a um, uh, an economic uh, adversary of ours um, just like the Japanese did in the in the sixties, uh, yeah. Well, 
I, I would skip over three. I meant three, but whatever. So, <laughs> three, four, they're all wars to me, but. There you go. So, yeah. Well, yeah, sorry about that, guys. That technology thing that, that you mentioned, you know, um, that actually just happened here in Florida. One of our city's water supply mm -hmm. was hacked. Yeah. And uh, they were able to release too much of a certain chemical that would have made the the um, water poison. In um, but it was the sensors it was, caught it. It was stopped by redundancy in the program. But uh, that's a really that's it's a real. very real thing. Yeah. 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 And that that's that's really what I mean. If you can if you can kill a whole city for example without firing a shot why not i mean that's going that's going to be the way to do it in the future is to, is to is to use the technology not robots and stuff like that but but really the the, the technology that we've already built or, around and and not updated uh since uh the 60s i mean since it was all created you know sort of thing so so yeah i mean that that's going to be the the bigger concern for me i mean not that I know a lot, but it's just my opinion. So, yeah. Well, I think you've been out in the field more than any of the rest of us, you know, as far as I know, some of you might be secret agents out there and <laughs> I am not, <clears throat> never have been. <laughs> so, you know, you had boots on the ground, as they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wore out, I wore out a few of those. <laughs> so, <laughs> For sure. Did a lot of walk, did a lot of walking in those days, you know. So yeah, that was before Uber. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. it was before a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're you're talking way back when uh, when I was young, even. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, good to know. Thanks, Rich. Glad you're not a secret agent or a cat. <clears throat> any, any more questions out there? I, I think that's an observation. There you go. Live off the grid. Yeah, which is um, which is interesting. I I, um, I actually have um, uh, helped. Um, a very dear friend of mine, partner in uh, uh, to uh, create a another a book called the Endangered Earthlings Handbook, which is all about living off the grid and and um, you know what's happening with the world and and uh, uh, climate change, etc. And where we've come from millions of years ago, uh, right on up to the current, and and how to live off the off the grid and and minimally, basically, right? So. Um, yeah, so if you're if you're interested in a good book, uh, pick that one up. It's uh, by an author uh, whose name is um, Pamela Erickson, and you can find that on Amazon as well. And also Indie Book Source. Um, oh, and, book oh yeah, and, yep. She's on Indie Book Source, and yep. so is Paul. So Paul yep. is also. Paul is one of the founding members, actually. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, thank really. You. Thank you. For I think you were with us before we were even Indie Book Source when we were just. You know, promoting everyone for free. <laughs> oh, I didn't remember that. So yeah. oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Now we charge. <laughs> <laughs> and rightfully so. You did you do a great job. Absolutely Thank great. Thank you. It's our pleasure. <laughs> we enjoy it. We enjoy all of our authors actually. <clears throat> yeah. So have you uh do we have any winners yet of books? So can you uh, let me let me just look it over there real quick and see. Without disappearing. Don't disappear. Am I disappearing? No, no, don't disappear yet. Um, let's see, do I have, yeah, I think I have a couple here. Yeah, a couple. Well, where am I at? Here, I am back. Okay, yeah, I think I have a couple, so that's good. Great, um, that's great. Let's see. So here, let's see, there's a question here. <laughs> Um, well, it, it depends on how survivally you want to get, um, I, I think as far as being prepared, um, what you want to, what you want to do is, um, I mean, not go berserk about anything. Uh, I mean, this thing about, uh, the, the toilet paper that everybody had to have 25 packs of it, uh, when, when the COVID started and all that, uh, that's, 
that's not necessary actually um, to to be uh, to be a survivalist. Um, what what you want to do is you want to be able to understand how to fix things, simple things. You know, uh, how you want to be able to, uh, to understand how to generate your own electricity using uh, solar or wind, um, which which is quite doable today and quite inexpensive. Um, those are the kinds of, of things that you'd want to do. You can always figure out, um, uh, you know, I mean, if you really want to go for it, you can go, go really off grid and, and build your own house or, or, you know, canopy or whatever, however you want to do that. But, but um, you, you know, it just depends on your level of, of where you want to be in the world and, 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 how, and how you can really I guess maybe uh, structure all that around your your family and your commitments and things like that. Because some people would rather have you know a big house and lots of kids around them and you know sort of thing. You just figure out what you want to do at what level you want to do. You might want to just say, okay, I'm I'm recycling and that's what I want to do and and that's my contribution to the earth, which is which is a good thing. Uh, you don't have to really be a survivalist in that way, but but um, uh, survivalist I mean is a whole other level of uh, of functioning and, and uh, probably something that we couldn't really solve in, in five minutes here or so. But um, anyway, yeah, grow your own food, uh, excellent. Yeah, I, and uh, uh, Pamela Erickson does grow her own herbs and and her, uh, some of her own food and, and and that sort of thing. So uh, and learn to hunt. Yeah, um, yeah, I wouldn't mess with that lady either. So on the hunting level, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I was. I was never able to really, really shoot a gun really well. Um, in fact, I almost shot uh, Zita, uh, my uh, partner, a couple of times. So she, she would never, no, ever knowingly let me have a gun after she figured that out. So <laughs> you see me, see me have very few guns in, in Europe. I, I do have, I do have some, um, but um, I mean, I do use some, but, but. Um, yeah, so so that but that's another another story there. So, um, so, so Pamela was just in uh, um, Death, Valley. Death Valley. Yes, she was. Yeah, she for a How three, a three week. She, uh, uh, three, she was there for a three week uh, trial and um, yeah. a, 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 like a proof of concept kind of thing to to see yeah. how to. Uh, how to generate uh, electricity off grid and, and uh, water usage and uh, and and uh, the whole the whole nine yards. You know, the make your own make your making your own food out of uh, dried chickpeas and, and things like that. So so it was it was a, a really interesting and, and uh, she learned a lot. And being a smart lady, she will put it all to use as well. So. And she'll put it in her book. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. We can buy her book and learn how to do all this stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I think Ted already knows how to grow his own food and herbs and stuff. And he's started already sort of, haven't you, Ted? Probably. I don't think he can talk. <laughs> he can type. Oh. oh, yeah, he can type. Sort of. <laughs> like we said, that's our boss. Don't <laughs> piss off the boss. <laughs> So, any parting uh, advice there, uh, Paul? Um, yeah, you know, I would I would tell people to um, to to get out and see the world. You know, I uh, I lived in St. Louis of all places for the for a, a number of years, and and I know many many people who haven't taken the ten minutes to drive across the river, the Mississippi River. Um, to, to be in Illinois, to be in a, just another state for Pete's sake, you know, I mean, uh, the part of the reason why most of us don't like each other now is it because we don't know each other. I get out there and, and experience the world as far as you can. Not don't have to go to uh, 50 countries. You just, just go around the United States if that's all you want or like to do. Um, but, but get out there and, and understand people and, and talk to them about their about their religions and learn to listen more than talk and and more than judge don't try not to judge i mean, I mean who's who's going to be perfect in this world anymore you know so you just 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 learn understand people and and uh, and i guarantee you'll be making a lot more friends and and you'll be a lot more open-minded about different things that come along so i i would just say get out there and 
and quote unquote see the world and see what you can do. And when you're there, just don't be taking snapshots and and uh, 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 they're good for memories, but but snapshots don't don't get you interactions with people. It doesn't it doesn't get you to sample the food? It doesn't get you to to understand, you know, why why this this restaurant has uh, seven generations of people uh, uh, handing down to it, you know, kind of stuff. And, and I mean, there's all kinds of things to learn and, 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 uh, and that's so why I get out there, you know, and Ireland is a wonderful place to, to go. I, I, I spent many, many years and many, uh, um, in many disguises as well. I had in those days. So, well, I just have to say, I agree with you a hundred percent. You know, I lived out of the country for three years and it taught me a lot. And I really believe we need to respect what everybody else believes because there are many different cultures, very many different beliefs, belief systems. And um, you, we don't have to agree with each other. We just have to respect what each other thinks because it's valid. It's your belief system, yeah. system, you can believe whatever you want. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I agree. Mm -hmm. Agreeing with people um, is never a good thing to go on. <laughs> never based on anything because you're always going to be, everybody's individual and everybody is uh, has got their own thing. But, but if you just stop talking uh, and, and, and then start... Um, listening more to people I mean that and that's what you have to do on social media anyway so you're already trying to do that you know so it's like you have um, um well there are two types of people on social media right let me just go off on this tangent here there's one that has that has the five million uh uh followers and, and they follow three people right so that right. tells you right away that look at me it's all about me right right I don't care, I don't care about you and then you see, you see the people that have, um, well, like me, I have, I have 80 some thousand followers on Twitter, but I also follow 75,000. So, so yeah. it's all about, it's all about interactions and understanding and learning. And, and everybody's, if you stop learning, you're starting to die, you know, kind of thing. You have to, you have to just keep learning and learning and learning. And, and because you're going to find something interesting. If you pay attention, you'll find something interesting to you. Um, and that and that's what you need to do uh, as far as is out in the in the world and kind of thing. So, so, I, so well, I, I just thought someone said, "Did I win on on the thing?" Uh, I, I don't want to go away from. Uh, <laughs> I got lost, I guess, uh, before when I when, when I switched my screen over. So uh, this guy um, here is. I, 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 I will let I will let you know as soon as I can do that, and and uh, I'll just say if you if sent me an email, I'll, I'll get you a book. Well, there thank you, you. There you go, Dom. That's You're a generous. winner, winner. So you can yeah. relax, Dom. <laughs> we got you covered. Um, Paul, thank you very much for yeah. joining us. This has been awesome. It has. Uh, it's great getting to talk with you and hearing all your experiences and everything. Um, I, well, you, haven't heard, you haven't heard most of them. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe you have me back. Maybe you can have me of, back sometime. Have yeah, me back yeah. sometime, and I'll tell you about. Indonesia uh, in Kuala Lumpur. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay. So, well, we want? have uh, Dominic says, yes, have you back. Um, you want to join us uh, next Wednesday, everybody, uh, March 3rd. We're going to have a double feature, mystery authors. Um, our guests are going to be Gerald Darnell. He's the author of the Carson Reno series and Michael Stephen Daigle of the Frank Nagler series. Do you know them, Paul? Series. I and, um, do not, only, only, from, only through uh, Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. yeah. You, can find their, you can find their books on Indie Book Source. Uh, there are also authors there. And then we also want to encourage everybody, if you enjoyed this show, um, that you'll probably like a lot of the shows that are on WLFE DB Radio, Dash DB Radio. Dash. Sorry. Um, the, uh, Monday night, we've got Paratalk Radio with Ted, who we've been talking with here, and Cindy. That's at 8 o'clock Monday. And Real Talk with Dom, which is Dominic, that we've been talking with a lot. He's on at 10 o'clock. And then uh, on Tuesday, we've got the Creepy Parlor with Genevieve, who is on here too. That's at 7 o'clock. And after that, that's followed by Where's My Sage uh, with Mike and Christy at 8 o'clock. So... 
got a lot of things to, um, a lot of a lot of good shows to see, a lot of nice people to meet, and um, I think if that's it, we've just gone over time. We've gone over time, and uh, well, thank, thank you, Paul, again. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody, for, for bearing. Thank for you all us. for bearing with me. Thank you all Wait. for bearing with me, and uh, and and thank you to Joan and uh, and Rob for doing this. It's great. Well, you're welcome. On to the next. Just wait for us backstage. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining us here on Meet the Author. Make sure you stay up to date with our show by clicking like, follow, and share. And you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and more. See you next time on WLFE-DV.com. You've been listening to WLFE-DB.com, where our shows are your shows.